You know, man's scientific knowledge has doubled in the past decade. Yes, doubled. And technological advances continue at a bewildering rate. Today's men and women who fail to keep pace with this profound transformation of our society will soon find themselves as out of, pla out of place as out of place as a hippie in a hovercraft. We s I'm with you, ma'am. We, we don't know what it means. It, it just, it got by in rehearsal and here it is tonight. And we're all just sick about it, frankly. But now back to our story. To help our viewers prepare for the changes to, oh, I'm sorry, I should have moved at that point. Let me, uh, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. To help our viewers prepare for the changes tomorrow, we'll bring, hi, Paul, Hiram, Will, Lee, uh, Steve. Let's now examine some of the wonders we can expect, here it comes, in the world of the future, ladies and gentlemen, yes. <laughs> here we are in the world of the future. Well. First, there was the wristwatch. Recently, they've developed a wrist TV. Do we have a wrist TV? I guess not. Uh, but in the future, everyone now will be wearing one of these wrist toasters. Let's, let's try a piece of this toast here. Mm, actually, it tastes a little burnt now. The problem, what do you do with a piece of burnt toast from a wrist toaster? Well, you put it in the wrist waste basket right there. There you go. That's exactly how that works. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> uh, now, uh, now, this is of particular interest to me, the TV of the future. Let's see what marvelous programming is in store for us 30 years from now. Let me just push it on there. The TV of the future, ladies and gentlemen. What are you talking about? Now, Arnold, try to understand the situation. <laughs> yeah, Bermuda. <laughs> It is a coup. <coughs> 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 uh, 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 well, that's the TV of the future. Of course, by the year 2000, most food items will be available in the form of a pill. For festive occasions, however, highly advanced caterers will create pills containing an entire wedding buffet for 200 guests. Here we have this right here. Hmm. Hmm, I think, I think they got part of the ice sculpture in there. This is the pill of the future for weddings. Well... Now, uh, also in the future... The mysterious process called cloning will be an everyday reality. Cloning booths like this one will appear in every shopping mall and gas station to serve a variety of purposes. The cloning booth here. Hey, Dave, here's a 20 I owe you. Oh, thank you very much, Steve. But uh, first, would you mind stepping into the booth here? Cloning booth. The cloning booth. Hey, Dave, here's the 20 item. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Yeah. What a fine young fellow, isn't he? Uh, this is exciting news right here. The field of hydroponics now gives us tomatoes and cucumbers cultivated underwater without using any precious soil. Now, new breakthroughs will allow us to grow hydroponic baked goods like these crescent rolls and muffins in an ordinary aquarium. Yes, Grandma's special rye bread can also make a thirsty bath sponge, and the backyard pool can be your own Dunkin' Donuts. It's hydroponic baked goods, ladies and gentlemen, in the world of the future. I'll be looking forward to it myself. Now, with a device originally designed to handle radioactive isotopes, in the future, you'll never have to touch anything you don't want to touch. Slimy soap, rotting vegetables, even your grandmother's wig can be safely handled in this containment chamber. And that's just about all we could come up with there. <laughs> okay, well, uh, this is even more exciting than the last one. Here we see the paperweight, the paperweight of tomorrow. Yes, the Desk Pal 2000. Hmm. You know, even with all this fancy gadgetry, it still pretty much looks like just an ordinary paperweight to me. Pretty Attention, much. puny humans. 
Bring me your important papers. All of them. There is no volume of your insignificant documents that the Desk Pal 2000 cannot hold down. Don't listen to it, ladies and gentlemen. Power has driven it mad. You. Bring me the one that you called Jerry Lewis. I will interview him. Bring him that he may worship the Desk Pal 2000. Go on back over here and see if there's anything else on the TV here, the old... Uh, thing. Okay, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pause, hose down the audience and myself, and uh, we'll return that to the Bermuda. show. That Bermuda. Yes. <laughs> this and much, much more. We'll be back with Jerry Lewis. Uh, tonight, what we're going to do, uh, we do this periodically. We have folks stand up, and uh, they have uh, deep, burning uh, things they'd like for us to do for them, and we do it for them. So uh, it's called Who Asked For It? Anything they want, we, we try and satisfy their wildest dream right here on network television. And we have our first participant. How do you do, ma'am? Nice to see hi, you. Hi. Hi. Uh, where are you from? Here. Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. You look very healthy and happy, are you? Yes, very okay. much. Okay. And uh, what, what could we do for you tonight? Oh, Dave, I'm sorry, what is your name? Ellen Weinberg. Ellen, nice to meet you. What can we do Hi. for you? Dave, I have heard that there is a new kind of margarine that tastes almost exactly like butter. <laughs> Frankly, I am I'm skeptical about this. Can, huh. can you tell me if this is really true? Well, you know, I, I've heard these reports, a new kind of butter that tastes... <laughs> no, a new kind of margarine that tastes just almost like butter. And, and I share your skepticism, and uh, there's only one way to, to find out for sure. Tommy, Tommy, could you bring the uh, tub of butter and the tub of margarine out here? <laughs> All right, Tommy, go ahead and uh, give us your opinion, if you will. Our own Tommy Casabona, ladies and gentlemen. They taste pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> All right, ma'am. Tastes pretty close. Thank you, Tommy. They taste pretty close. All right, uh, who's next? Number two here on uh, Who Asked For It. How do you do, sir? Nice to see you. What is your name? Uh, Phil Bradshaw. Phil, what do you do for a living? I'm a computer programmer. Computer programmer, and uh, you live in the city, do you? Uh, in Boston. In Boston, so you're just down here vacationing Columbus for State, Columbus yeah. Day. Yeah, that makes sense. What, what can we do for you, uh, Phil? Well, I've been walking around taking pictures all day, and I need to put in a fresh roll of film. But my camera is kind of an old kind of camera, and it's way too bright in here for me to change the film. I oh, I see. So me out. you don't want to run the risk of exposing right. the film to the light. So what can we right. do for you? Uh, if you could just turn off the lights for a minute. <laughs> All right, Phil, let me just check. Hal, can we, can we bring down the house lights? Ask uh, Cheryl if we can uh, yeah, okay, just Dave. turn out the lights. Here they come. Uh, okay, that's... Phil, go ahead there. And make the change, if you will. That's true. A lot of uh, cameras, you can't... You can't uh, really change the film in, in bright sunlight. So, uh, how long does it usually take, Phil? Oh, just, just a second. Just a second. Okay. And, uh... Okay, that's great. That's great, thanks. Okay, you all set? Yeah. Okay, Hal, turn them back on. I can just get a picture of you. Oh, uh, you. Phil, I'm sorry, that's against uh, NBC policy. There's no... <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Rules. Rules are rules. And, uh, yes, ma'am, what is your name? Liz Weber. Liz, nice to see you. Where are you from? I'm just from, I just moved to New York from Cleveland, Ohio. So that's pretty exciting for you, isn't it? It sure is. And what do you, what do, you do for a living, Liz? I'm a registered nurse. Registered nurse? Mm -hmm. And uh, you work in a hospital? Here in the city, yes. All right. And what can we do for you, Liz? Well, we're on the brink of the party se season, and I don't know how to be a good party guest or how to give a good party, and I'd wonder if you could give me a few tips on well, that. Well, maybe we could turn that one over to Hiram Bullock, our uh, guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, there, Liz, there is something we can do for you. Uh, whenever anybody comes to work for NBC, there is a, an indoctrinational film, and, and I think this short educational film produced by the folks here at NBC uh, should answer your questions on what is re required to attend or, or give a party. So if you watch the monitors, Liz, 
just watch the monitors. If you are going to give a party, plan that party around a purpose. Choose your guests carefully. Plan invitations, plan for refreshments and entertainment. Then, practice to be a skillful host. Make sure the party is fun for everyone. And when you're invited to a party, practice the skills of a good guest. Be on time, ready for fun. Take part in the party. Help everyone around you to have a good time. Leave on time and courteously too, thanking your host sincerely for the good time you've had. All these things help to make a good party, a party that's fun for all. Yeah, boy, those... Thank you very much, Liz. I, I think you could see just how much fun those folks were having, too. Uh, yes, sir, who is next? How do you do? What is your name, sir? Uh, uh, Pat Muniak. Pat Muniak? Muniak, that's right. N nice to meet you, Pat. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Boston also. Boston also? And what can we do for you, sir? Well, Dave, when I was born, I had an identical twin brother, but we were separated shortly after birth and adopted by different families. Uh, I haven't seen him in almost 30 years, Dave, and I've spent the last 10 years of my life and most of my life savings trying to find him. Uh, Dave, could you re reunite me with my, my long-lost twin brother? Um... You know, I, I would like to help you, but frankly, this is, uh, request is really beyond this, the scope of this little segment we do here. It's a, it's a sad story. I, I hope you find it. Maybe give you a sponge after the show, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. There's really nothing we can do. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Well, good luck to you anyway. Uh, that's, I'm, so yeah, that's, that's really too bad. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What can we do for you, sir? What is your name? Um, Rod Sorensen. Rod, and uh, wh where are you from, sir? From Minneapolis. From Minneapolis? <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm a great fan of the show. I, oh, thank I watch you very it all much. the time. I, I really like it. Um, I have a request. It's, it's selfish, but uh, it would mean a lot to me. Uh, I'd like. I know it's unusual, but if I could tell my friends, if just for a second, I could sit in your chair. Okay, sure. We can uh, we can take care of that. Just uh, all right. Stay right there, uh, Jimmy, John. This gentleman would like to uh, sit in the chair. Why don't you just uh, take care of that for us? <laughs> yeah, we can. I don't think there's uh, any problem with that. We are uh, certainly willing to do what we can. Okay. Uh, okay, all right. Are you all set, Rod? Okay, yeah. go ahead. Sit down. All righty. That's it. Okay, you're done. Thank you very much, folks. We, uh, Hiram, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for, for uh, nice to see you again. Nice to have the show. Yeah, nice to see Hiram. Hiram Bullock is back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to pause here. We'll be right back to uh, talk to you. Have a good show.